instead of having a positive slope. It doesn't have a slope. Well, instead of being increasing. increasing it'd be decreasing. Yeah. So if you were to graph g of x equals one third to the x. Now keep in mind this is very similar to looking at this thing. This was the same thing then as 3 to the negative x. What happens when I switch the x to be negative? Well, as James said, I reflect over the y-axis. And so now I still have the same intercept on my y-axis, <coughs> but instead of going up as I go from left to right, I'm coming down. Yes? Um, when you write the intercepts, you have to put it as a point? Yes. You always have to write your intercepts as points. How would you put this into your calculator if you wanted to graph it? Yeah, you might probably want those parentheses. So this would be in your y1. This would probably look like 1 divided by 3 raised to the x. Or you could do 3 for raised to the negative x. Either one would be fine. So we know that flips it over the y-axis. What does the negative out front do to it? So if we make it negative 3 to the x, what is that going to do to the graph? So the red graph is what we're talking about now. Yeah, a negative out front flips it over the x-axis. Is this going to change anything about the domain? No, nope, still answer my five questions and come up with no, 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 no. Is this going to change the range of my function? Yeah, my range before was above the x-axis. Well, yeah, above the x-axis. If I flip my graph to be below the x-axis, my range now has to be all the stuff that's below the x-axis. Is it going to change my x-intercepts? Nope, still not going to have any. Is it going to change my y-intercepts? Yeah, because I went from being up here, where does this point go? Down to where y is negative 1, so my y-intercept would be 0, negative 1. Now, let's see where we are. We already did this one. What is plus 6 on the end going to do to that red graph? What does plus 6 do to a graph? Oh, it moves it up six. Moves it up 6. So instead of being here, this is going to be way up here. Is that going to change my domain? No. No? Nope. Is it going to change my range? Yeah. Yes. What's it going to do to it? Well, here's what it was before. What happens to it? It moves up 6. So I move 0 up 6. What happens when I move infinity up 6? It's still infinity, you know, infinity plus 6 is still that concept of keep going. Will it change where I run into the y-axis? Yeah. Yeah, what will happen to it? It'll also move up 6, so it will now run into it at 0, no, no, zero, the 0 part's right. 0, 7, when it was at 0, 1 before, it moved up 6, now 0, 7. Will it change where I run into the x-axis? No, because I wasn't running into it in the first place. What if instead of plus 6, it had been minus 6? It would go down. It would change my domain, not at all. It would change my range to go down. It would change my y-intercept to go down. Would it change where I run into the x-axis? Yes, because suddenly by going down 6, I will run into the x-axis. We will later talk about how to figure out where I would do that without using the calculator, we can't do that until we've actually talked about logarithms so that we can solve exponential equations. Because that's what we would need to be able to do to solve x, uh, figure out where it ran into the x-axis. Now, just like with the other stuff, we want to be able to build exponential functions. We only build simple ones. The simple exponential function we're going to talk about building today is going to be some number times a to the x. When I am done, I need to have the number for c and the number for a. The x gets to stay there. We need this graph to go through 0, 5, and also through 3, 40. Any suggestions for how I figure out c and a? Well, you can figure out. C, or you got, yeah, you got C, 
by 0 0.05. Which means when 0 into x, a becomes Not a, so but the value of a to the x becomes, becomes 1. one. Whenever I raise something to the 0, it's <coughs> going to be like easy. Because that becomes 1, and that'll let me find that out. So we're first going to plug in the point 0, 5. And what it says is that I'm supposed to get out 5 when I plug in 0 for x. Well, a to the 0 is 1, so 5 equals c times 1, so that means c is 5. Now, I can use that to figure out what a is going to have to be. So now I'm going to plug in c equals 5 and the other point. When I do that, what do I get? 40 equals 40 equals 5, five times a, a cubed. So I can divide that out, so I'll get 8 equals a cubed. Now what? Take the cubed root of both sides. Now my problem is a pretty easy one. What's the cubed root of 8? 2. What if instead of a cubed root I had to take a seventh root? Do you know how to do that on your calculator? Most of the time it will work to take 8 and raise it to the 1 7, because that would be the 7th root. Or your calculator will let you take nth roots, you type in 7, or whatever your number is for your root, hit your math button, and the fifth thing down on TI-83s is an x root, so you type that in and then you put in your number that you're taking the whatever, the 100th root of if you needed to and that will tell you what that number is going to be. So what in the end is my function? f of x is going to be what?